Um, so I look. I'm just saying though, maybe we could take some screen captures and put them with the slides maybe. Yeah, perhaps. Um, look, so I was, uh, just cause we've got folks on here and I'm looking at the participant list. We've got 12 people. I was a political consultant in Illinois. I ran uh, statewide campaigns, uh, Lieutenant Governor, Senate, U.S. Senate, worked on state Senate, state rep races, judicial campaigns, uh, ran my own state house race, and social media, Facebook really began uh, in earnest uh, around the time I was running the uh, 2008 opposition to uh, Dick Durbin. And the user experience um, really changed the way we interact with, with the public. What I mean by that is prior to the advent of social media, we would have to, we would buy all our time. We would run around and, and gain earned media. So what they call it, winning interviews with um, reporters, uh, subjecting ourselves to, um, you know, campaign uh, endorsement sessions and, and debates. And, you know, you, uh, you had to get everything you could get. As a Republican, they weren't going to give you anything for free. It's a different experience for Democrats. They get lots of earned media. They have uh, their allies, uh, you know, in the AP and, and other news agencies make sure they get mentioned. Um, Dick Durbin would, you know, his old habit um, was that gas prices were high in uh, the summer of 08, if you recall, um, the economy uh, was going through some strange things, including the mortgage crisis. Dick Durbin could call a press conference at a gas station and he could get television cameras to show up. And I, I don't know many Republicans that could simply call a press conference and get, you know, uh, <laughs> Chicago media to show up. So it's not just an incumbency thing, it's a, it's a bias thing. But earned media or social media gives us an opportunity to do some things that, that um, you know, we weren't really allowed access to before. And I think that's part of the reason that uh, Twitter and Facebook veered so hard to the left. So what I can tell you about that is um, there used to be Republicans in Facebook. The, uh, the original general counsel is a big Republican donor here in Silicon Valley. The, what they call the, the lead release engineer, the guy who um, approved every uh, update in their code uh, was a Republican. Um, those people are gone now. So they don't, we don't have a, a presence inside their organization to keep them honest. And obviously Twitter is even worse or what was, we'll see what, what Elon does with it. So you're, you're where I'm going with this is you, you have to use social media these days. It, it's what you have. It's what people are checking their news. You know, they're checking their neighborhood, uh, you know, updates, they're checking in with their organizations, they're, Cub Scout troops, everything. So if you're going to run for office today, you've got to be, you've got to be good at this stuff. And Facebook's the big daddy. So it's most, you know, they've got billions of accounts. They've got billions of types of accounts and it's pretty user friendly. And, you know, even though there may be some bias and some shadow banning, which I'll, I'll, I'll get into, um, it's still a pretty effective tool. Um, I don't use Twitter because it's, you know, it's just not something I'm super comfortable with. And I knew it was, I knew it was biased from the get go. That doesn't mean you should be afraid of it. That's just my preference. Um, I use uh, MeWe. It's a very similar to Facebook, but they don't censor. Um, it's still growing. It's, uh, you know, it's not, it's just not a market, you know, leader in social media yet. Um, I use Gab. I use Parler. And I use Getter, G-E-T-T-R. I do not, I've not used Trump social, you know, or truth social. I don't, I don't see any reason not to, but um, there is, there is an effect of using these platforms, a choice selection that, that reflects on you, the candidate. Um, uh, Parler was uh, demonized. I assume, you know, truth social is similarly you, uh, you have to be aware if you're using that social media that your audience is, is mostly conservative. You are not reaching the broadest spectrum 
of the community. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram are better for that. Um, they don't, uh, you know, they sure they, they censor Republicans, but they reach so many millions more people nationwide and, and thousands more in the areas in which you'll be running. So uh, can you see my face? Not, if not my screen? Okay, so uh, I, I've been told I have a voice, uh, I have a face for radio. So it's to my advantage to not use the camera. I'm just making a joke. Um, and it's, uh, you know, when I ran, I, I didn't post a lot of stuff with my, my picture on it. You got to use it. You got to think about, about that for your own campaign strategy. Got to think very carefully about what you're posting. So first of all, given this, this choice in platform, um, you, are not, you are not free to be more liberal in your social media sharing just because you're on a more conservative platform. First of all, it's, you could have to assume it's all permanent record. Anything you put on uh, social media is, is a permanent record. It's searchable, um, it's, it's fairly easily searchable. And you know, you, anything that you were, you thought, well, I'm among friends in whatever social group on a, you know, a, a, a page within Facebook, or you think because you're posting it on, you know, Getter, Parler, or True Social, that it's that it's a you know you could just say what you want. That that's just not true. Um, first of all, you have to assume that there are spies on there, people that um, you know would sign up for your to follow your page or to like your page simply to observe you because they're activists or because they they literally work for your opponent. Okay, this is not uncommon. Um, I, I don't think it's necessarily even dishonest. If they pretend to be someone they're not, well, that's a different thing. But they're going to get away with it, so expect it. And and that's things, especially true if you're running against an incumbent. Oh yes. And the larger the race, the more motivation and the more volunteers they have. So imagine, you know, we're Republicans. Imagine they've got union activists. Antifa activists in Seattle or the East Coast that are monitoring you because you know you're uh, you're running you know for office and and they're they've got some dog in the race so so they're going to watch. Um, they can do screenshots. They can do screen recording. They can do all kinds of things. Um, you uh, you know. You've heard about people being banned for saying various things, but I'm not even sure that's the worst outcome of this. It's more posting something that might get taken out of context. So I encourage you to wait to wade into social media, but I encourage you to be very careful about every single thing you share and every single thing you like. Now here's my best example. So I was in the Trump administration in the EPA. There was a lawyer that was going to join me in, in, the, uh, in the Western region here, and called Southwest region. And the Trump administration went and looked at his social media and they found a picture during the campaign in 2016. And I'll pick this meme for you. I was gonna show you the meme. It's Hitler drinking a glass of water and it's Donald Trump drinking a glass of water. And the caption of the meme is, see, I told you so, right? And the, the gag, of course, is that, you know, the left was accusing Trump of being a Nazi. And this is, you know, proof because they both drink water. So, ha, ha, ha. Okay. I think it's hysterical, you know. Um, my, my deposed colleague, his sister, posted that on his Facebook page. And he liked it. The Trump administration would not take him on board because he liked that meme. And, you know, I, I tried to defend him. I said, look, it's a joke. And, and the response was, it's an image of Hitler comparing it to Donald Trump. We don't need that kind of that guy in the administration. So the message to take away from that is even our friends are, are not going to understand 
you know, any kind of, any kind of, you know, humor like that on Facebook. And if you were engaged in it in the past, you need to go and take a look and see if, you know, you, you delete, you know, trim it as best you can. Um, if you were particularly into memes of whatever type, and I was going to show you some, some social stuff that just happens to appear in the background that's questionable. You know, I, I, I'm advising a candidate, uh, Travis knows him in Illinois, he killed his entire Facebook page and started over again. But that still doesn't mean you're necessarily gonna, gonna get away with it. I, I went and I dropped my last name. I am Christopher Lee, which is my middle name on Facebook. You can send me a Facebook friend request if you want, but I have my Facebook locked down uh, uh, pretty well. Um, because I don't want to be quoted later for some, you know, silly joke I posted, no matter how, you know, how innocuous it is. And I'm, and I'm pretty careful with this stuff. So you don't want to post any pictures that are questionable. You don't want to uh, like any images that are questionable. You don't want to go join groups that are questionable. Um, people can see a log of your activity. And I was, there's, a, there's a button, you can play around with Facebook. It shows like you can search your friends and then you could go back and you can see their activity. So all of this is by way of warning. You know, there, um, there's just so many, so many hazards uh, available for you to step into on social media. Now, how do you deal with it? By the way, Travis, do you want to add anything in there? Um. Yeah, uh, you know, there was a there was a question that came across the screen about um, what well, is is social media worth it? it uh, back to your original point uh, that Chris, you were making about uh, earn media, and you were talking about how social media is a way for um, us to sort of level the playing field. And there was a question that came across the, the screen here: Is it? is it worth it? Will they overlook us? And, you know, um, as far as, you know, paid targeting on the bigger platforms, i.e., you know, Facebook, Twitter, et cetera, Instagram, um, you know, they, once they approve an ad, the ads will deliver, you will get results, you will be able to see it. Um, things like video, uh, content you know interesting content is going to get more engagement than you know more mundane content so be careful what what you post but yes the the answer to that question is yes it is worth it um it is a great way to reach a lot of people at a low cost and you can the great thing about social media is you you set the budget you know um if you go to a radio station and buy a radio ad the ad costs you know so much per spot uh, same thing with TV and print. With, with Facebook, it, it's dynamic pricing. If you want to spend $100, you spend $100. If you want to spend more, you spend more. It's, uh, you know, you de you determine, uh, you know, and then it'll go far depending on who else is trying to reach those those particular individuals. So, um, you know, it, it, is, it is worth it. And then <clears throat> I do want to touch on a point that Chris made about scrubbing your Facebook page uh, and scrubbing your social media accounts. Um, you know, being a candidate is much different than being just a regular person on the street. Uh, you will want to uh, make sure that there's nothing, anything remotely controversial, uh, make sure that is deleted because it will get out there, especially um, in, you know, especially with a hotly contested race, um, you, you know, if, if you're already filed, if you're already on the ballot, there's probably people already looking at your social media accounts uh, and trying to find uh, information. And I know this uh, because I do this for a living and I too spend a lot of time looking at my opponent's social media accounts. So um, if I'm doing it, I know they're doing it. Yeah, it's, it's fair game. It's so. So I hope that I hope that it, it's clear. Uh, it's it's not just a good idea to do social media. I really view it as a, a necessary thing. Um, there is another platform I forgot to mention. It's called Nextdoor. Um, it is a verified identification platform. They actually send you a postcard 
it is highly localized. And the reason it's important to mention that is that might be very, very valuable to school board candidates because um, you sign up for it, you give them your address, they actually send you a postcard to confirm that you live there. And if you, if you try to move your account to another place, they'll actually, they'll actually require you to move. They've got a system in place for that. None of the others do that. It's a voluntary identification of location for most of, of the others. But what that means is the people, and they, they allow you to post things in your immediate neighborhood, your nearby neighborhood, and your greater neighborhood. And, and you, can, you can change that radius. And it's, it's really nonpartisan in, in, its, in its application. It's, I lost my dog. Um, I need a bike for my kid. Does anyone have one to sell? It's, uh, hey, the sirens are, are going again. I, I have a helicopter that's over my house on, on the regular. And there's speculation as to why the helicopter's there all the time. But as a, and as a school board candidate, you're oh. going to see local concerns, very localized concerns, which I think will be highly relevant to the race you're running. And, and things like, should this school be closed? Should these, should these library hours be you know, open longer? Um, and they're all real people. They're not, they're not, you don't, you don't have the, you have a minimum amount of these ghost and, and robot accounts. So take a look at next door. Now, that one in particular, uh, in my area in, uh, in Silicon Valley has been very hard on Trump supporters. Uh, people that, you know, they've been actively trying to like get into Trump supporter groups and, and they've taken out a couple of them, but they are looking for controversy. They're not just knocking them out. Um, you know, just willy nilly. Uh, so I see in the chat there is, yeah, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of clipping of Republican content, but uh, school board stuff shouldn't be, you know, shouldn't, shouldn't be immediately tagged as Republican anyway. I'm assuming um, where we're running here in, in Silicon Valley that, you know, the, a lot of this stuff can be, you can run as a not appearing to be a nonpartisan candidate for the most part. And so they're not going to sniff you out as fast. Um, so, you know, use it, use it, use these as best you can use as many as you can is, is my advice. Now, how do you use them? Well, um, one of the ways is just, you know, Facebook is to build your friends and to increase the orbit, you know, the, the range of people you're influencing. So you can start, you could just go with your personal page. Um, it's, it's naturally limiting because it's going to suggest, uh, you know, friends, you know, people you have a connection to and whatnot, but it's better if you create a group. So a page. So a candidate page would be the basic way to go. Um, there's tools for this, <laughs> I was gonna show you, but they're, they're fairly self-explanatory. You create a new page and you call it, you know, um, Jan Smith for school board or or you could just Jan Smith for, you know, for office or something like that. Vote for Jan Smith if you want. You can also just use, you know, your name. Um, it's not as obvious to people who are, you know, following that, but it, it gives you some kind of control over keeping people from seeing your private information. Um, those pages can be uh, set up a, a couple different ways, the choices you know, when you when you run down through the creation, some will let you uh, actually message people from your page, your group. Um, some will let you post events, which is very helpful for candidates. All will let you pay to increase the audience that that sees it. And that was what Travis was referring to. And it's I think he covered it's very modular. It's very friendly. And, uh, you know, um, I've used it for a lot of different uh, issues, not just, uh, not just political stuff. I had a, an 800th anniversary reenactment of the signing of Magna Carta in 2015. And I uh, broadcast the group to a, a larger neighborhood with just a handful of dollars and got, got more audience members in. Um, there's, a, 
the way you would handle your the why, the why you would have a page or a group instead of just your personal page is you know this campaign will not your campaign will not go on forever um you may run for a different office later um you may not want to you know you may not want to keep all the friends you met just because of politics now personal pages have a great tool on them that i use constantly and i, I want to cover this your, so your personal Facebook page, people don't realize that the interface on your computer is different than the interface on your phone. And it's and it's a lot different. Um, so if you go into if you go into your laptop or your, your desktop and you go to a browser and you launch Facebook, you will see a more robust set of tools. And one of those that, that I find infinitely useful is if you click on your friends on the top left and you go all the way down, it will let you set up friend lists, custom friend lists. So what I have done is I have taken all of the conservatives that I, that I know and I put them in a friend, I create a friend list called cons and I put all, I, was, you know, I put all the conservative people that I know in that group. Um, I have a college fraternity group, so I started one, it's Theta Chi, I started a Theta Chi friend group, and I put my Theta Chi brothers in that group. Once you start the group on your laptop, when you're using your phone to update Facebook, you can add them, you can add friends, you can hold down the, the blue friend button on the left that every, under their profile, it says friends, a little, uh, blue block over on the left, you hold that down and it says add to list. And then you can add, you can classify them, right? So what does that get you? So when you're posting something that you think only Republicans would be interested in, if you have a group like I do, cons, and you've characterized your friends as conservative, you can share just to them. I still don't post anything controversial, you know, but it's stuff that might be a turnoff to my liberal friends. And I have characterized many of my friends as liberals. And I gotta be honest, I don't share a lot with them on public policy. I've found that in the recent past, say the past six years, really since, since Trump was campaigning, they've been very unreasonable. Uh, they're not open to a lot of discussion. Um, they will make asinine comments on otherwise innocuous posts. So it's been helpful just to post, you know, some things just to my non-liberal friends. And Facebook will let you do that whenever you post. There's a privacy button. You can adjust and edit privacy. And you can do it for past posts as well. So you posted pictures of, you know, your Labrador receiver, re retriever. And you've got friends that don't like dogs. They like cats. So you would have a group, uh, you'd classify some of your friends as dog lovers and some of his cat lovers, and you would just not share or you would exclude the cat, the cat people. Um, I realize this can be a little controversial. It's a tool not everyone's aware of, very few actually, but it's very powerful. So you run for school board and you've got your close friends and your family. I have a button for family too. And you know they'll support almost anything you do. And maybe you've got a local conservative that's gonna host something at their home, um, but you don't want you know, the general public to see that you're having an event at you know, whoever, whatever conservative, you know, which is Jan's house. Jan's hosting a fundraiser for you, um, you don't want the general public to be invited to Jan's house. So you might have a pay, you might have a classification in your friend list just for people in your school district area. You might have a classification with just people that donate to your campaign. You can make it as robust as you want and then, and then use it accordingly. So I, you know, I would share um, some of my um, more offbeat humor just with close friends. And I have a group of just people that, you know, have a quirky sense of humor, people that are into, you know, the Second Amendment or what have you. And uh, 
you want to you want to start to use those tools on your personal page immediately if you're going to use them because it takes some time to actually put your to put the classifications in place for the individual friends and then say you started your group for you know Jan Smith for school board well um, you know you probably got some friends out east that are following you on Facebook or or whatever that are not uh, that are not gonna one they're not gonna ever help okay and if they find out that you're running as a Republican they might you know work against you so maybe you you don't share that school board group the introduction of that school board group or page with those folks you share it with a more limited audience you see how that that would uh, that would make your use of Facebook more targeted um, when you've got something to post. Do you want, you know, all right, so, let, so it's a habit too. So let's talk about the habits. You want to post regularly. The search engines that Facebook uses internally generate traffic based on what you post and how often you post. So if I share a picture of my child doing something, um, that gets, that their algorithm treats that differently than when I post an article about this shooting in Texas, for example. And I can tell you that over the years, um, what I have figured out is I need to share non-political stuff fairly often to keep my page visible to other people. So if I constantly shared political stuff, I would go down in Facebook's algorithms, all right? So, stuff that might not be directly relevant to your campaign, you might want to share because it's related to schools. And I'm going to hand the baton here to Travis in a minute, um, because I think this is, this is kind of what he's been doing too. So a budgetary item for the, for the schools. You have an opinion about it. You share it. You note your opinion. If you think that opinion is going to help your campaign. If you're not sure what your opinion is on it, you could still post it without comment and then watch what happens in the comments to learn some more about the people following you. You could, you could post something that has a tangential relationship to the schools. Maybe, you know, the way our property taxes are used, a school safety issue, um, you know, something relevant to the city that isn't necessarily relevant to the school district, um, just, to, just to keep activity going. Um, you want, you also, you need to encourage, uh, your supporters to like your posts regularly. You need to train them to get in a habit of liking everything you post. The more likes you get, the higher it moves in their algorithm. If you post a particularly funny cat video and everybody loves it, it goes up, 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 right? So you want, it's, it's the same way with anything you're posting on your personal page related to your campaign, any event that you post, you know, either a meet and greet or a fundraiser and anything that you're doing to opine on your actual race. You wanna get people to get you likes. And it's similar for all the other social media. They, they magnify it based on how much interest it's getting. It's a chicken and egg kind of thing. Um, so there's some, uh, Travis, I'd let you weigh in on that and some strategies related to that. Um, ab ab absolutely. Um, well, well, one, one, a couple of points I want to make real, real quickly um, is that there are, uh, as Chris has identified, a number of different platforms out there. Um, social media, above all, to me, has to be um, something um, that you enjoy doing. Uh, if you create an account, and as Chris mentioned, and you're not posting regularly, then it's kind of pointless to have that account. Um, so be judicious in the platforms you want to use. Make sure they're platforms that you like and are comfortable with. Um, you know, I think the, the idea is to reach as many people as possible in the space where they are. Um, but if it becomes such a burden that you don't you don't want to do it and, and it's and you're not liking a platform, you're, you're, you're not really helping yourself anyway, because if it's forced, it's going to you know, all the content you put out there is going to look forced. 
And that's not going to help bring people to want to support your candidacy. You know, it should be fun. It should be enjoyable. Uh, so the most social, the most successful show social media pages that relate to um, political candidates for office are ones where the candidates themselves are engaged and involved and have other people helping them, but they have a presence on there them, them, themselves. Those are the most successful um, paid pages. Uh, here in Illinois, we have a gubernatorial candidate, Darren Bailey. He by far has the most followings on, on, on Facebook uh, of any of the other candidates but he's also the most engaged on that page. He, he does uh, Facebook videos all the time and we, he has staff people working on it too, but you know, he's engaged in his own social media page and that comes across and, and, and that's why it's growing and that's why it's a, a vibrant um, space. Um, so, and don't think that you have to do something. If you, if you just don't want to, you know, you just, you tried parlor, you don't like it, don't use it. You know, um, there's no hard and fast rule here. Um, the other thing too, is that as a candidate, is, as long as you're not, you know, this isn't a, 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 an official government page, if it's just a political page and you're a candidate for office, you don't have the same rules as other people do with, uh, as, as uh, government officials do. So you can delete posts, you can ban people from your pages um, and you know you have total control over that. So keep that in mind. And you know, if somebody comes on your page and they're causing trouble, you can kick them off. You, know, you don't need, and the other thing too, is a lot of people look at social media and they wanna engage in social media debates. Um, that's a distraction. Um, if somebody's belligerent uh, and, and saying things that they shouldn't, they're trolls, kick them off. Um, and the other thing about social media is keep it in perspective. Um, I, I've had a lot of panic calls from clients. Oh, my social media page is blowing up. People are, are angry and uh, we need to, you know, we need to do this because they're upset. And I go and look on the page and there's like two comments from yeah. the same person like <laughs> you know we're not we, you know and, th and this was a this was a hospital client that i worked for with and um you know this is you know they, they have a multi-million dollar you know marketing budget it's like no we're not letting this person on facebook determine our marketing plan that's ridiculous um do you, do you all understand the concept of a troll do you know what a troll is If anybody does not, you know, uh, you know, post it in the chat and, and I'll go through it. I'm just going to assume you know what it is, but uh, this trolling is common, what, what Travis is talking about. And, yeah. And, and you shouldn't respond to it. And I have an old rule that, that I learned as a criminal prosecutor. And it is, you don't, you don't wrestle with a pig. The pig <laughs> kind of likes it and you just get dirty. Okay. And what that means is people will post comments just to try and goad you to troll you. And you make a mistake by engaging that negativity. Tra like Travis said, just delete it. Just delete the comment, cut off, cut off their access. If they're posting negative stuff, you, you have to trust that other people know that it's just trolling, but engaging them is what they want, right? They want you to waste time on it. I, I would generally, I would stay out of the comments. I, I don't think they're helpful. Do you agree, Travis? I agree. And, and especially at, at a, a, a level like this, where you're running for school board, where it is, you know, there it, it's in a limited geographic area. And a lot of the people involved in this are people who know you or are, you know, know of you. And, um, you know, the temptation to engage with those folks is going to be even greater in a race like this than, say, a congressional race. Um, and I would say stay out of that and, you know, let people let other people on your page um, defend you. And that, that's where it's good ideas. You know, Chris mentioned having your friends like your content. 
I would also add to that, have them share the content. A lot of things, a lot of times I, I like, what I like yes. to do with the candidate is create a private group page that, that's just you and your friends. And when you have a, a, a post that you want them to share and, and like, and you know, put it there so that, that they can idea. go and, and go on your page and share it and like it and, and create some more engagement. Cause you know, that organic um, activity doesn't cost anything. It, it doesn't take someone, you know, it, it takes them two seconds to like the content and um, it, it, it's a big, big help and it'll create a big, a big audience uh, and without you having to really spend any money either. Now there's, that, there's something else that dovetails into what Travis has been saying. So if you're not comfortable with social media, this is a great task to assign to someone who is, who supports you, okay? <laughs> um, a family member that, that wants to help you, a good friend that's, that's savvy with social media, um, whatever it is, you, you want to be careful about who you share a password with for your personal account. But but candidates have given us personal, you know, their personal account access before. And you, you can, you know, you can you allow them to do that. But creating a page or a group, you can make them administrators. So I post secretly on three different uh, groups on Facebook. And I just yeah, I just dump interesting articles that I think, you know, are, are relevant. They're, they're all political. Um, but I'm helping those organizations keep their keep their Facebook present live. The the other um, the, I, I love his idea of creating a group just to share that that just to talk about what you're going to share. Um, the there's a couple questions I want to get to. Uh, before we get to seven, um, maybe maybe uh, in about five more minutes, we'll get to the questions that are in the chat. Um, but aside from having a volunteer do it, you can't actually hire someone like Travis. This is what this is part of what tra how Travis makes his money. Uh, to be to be completely you know full disclosure on this, in and. You know, a, a person like Travis would would learn a little bit about you. Would you know, you you'd friend them. You know, on your personal page, they they look at what you're doing. You know, get a sense of it, and then you give them permission to manage. You know, to comment on your group as you. I, I jokingly call it sock puppet activity. You know, you're wearing the group and pretending to talk like that person. There is no reason why. Um, you couldn't find somebody who's savvy, who's well-informed, that could pretend to be you for school district board purposes, for school district campaign purposes. Obviously, um, that has to be someone you trust. That's someone you, you know, you uh, you want to know a little bit about so they don't, you know, go off the rails. But, um, you know, it's, uh, it's, a good, it's a good technique if you feel your time is limited. So, um, I, th I hope we've sold you on social media. I think you're 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 here because, you know, you're interested in it. Um, please don't sour on any one platform. I realize there's lots of strong opinions about Nextdoor, but it still has its purpose, um, and and they're all different audiences. And in a school district race, you need to reach as many non-Republican regulars as possible, and so a variety of social media can help. Platforms can do that. And it's probably easier than you realize to cross post. So you write, uh, you take a, a hypertext link uh, for something you say on start, you say you start with Facebook and you maybe make a comment on it. You uh, right click on it and, and copy the whole text box. And then you can go paste that into the activity window on other social media. So you could put the same stuff that you're putting on, on Twitter, on Facebook, on MeWe, on Gab, on, you know, Getter, whatever, and you you covered them all. But it's really not that much extra labor for you. And if you're using your your laptop, you know, your desktop screen or your phone, 
you should be able to remain uh, logged into those and just move between the apps. So honestly, if I found a good, a good meme, I might be able to put it on six social media platforms in five minutes, super easy. Um, I'll say one more thing about that and then I'll give it back to Travis. I, I believe in the power of humor. I may not seem like it right now because it's just, I'm probably a cup too much coffee in me or something. But um, I, I love memes. I love funny videos. And if you, you know, you can endear yourself to people and inoculate yourself against the typical opinions about Republicans being harsh or mean or whatever by, by playing some humor into your, into your Facebook posts. You know, something, you know, goofy that you, you saw, maybe a, you know, a, a funny, you know, cat video or whatever. Like, don't be afraid, uh, you know, to use some of that every once in a while. Use that humor. Um, with memes, you just got to make sure they're not, you know, off color or political. I gave you the example of the, the Hitler meme. As a general rule, I find it, I find it sad that we have to say this. Don't mention Hitler or Nazis. There's just there's no reason to talk about Hitler or Nazis on any social media at any time. It's just it's just not going to go over well with anybody. There's just a couple things like that. Just you know, don't do it. Um, Travis, do you have anything to add? Yeah. At this um, point, what, when 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 you're looking at um, communicating we'll through there. media on uh, on social media, um, I look at it okay. in three. Well. Um, oh, wait, I see wait, Ingrid wait, says, yeah, you've got your social media accounts are connected. You post in one place and it goes everywhere. Great. I hope that um, the rest of you listening could get, you know, that same level of sophistication. Um, that would be a wonderful, uh, that would be a wonderful level of comfortability. If you're not, uh, if your election, you know, is in November, you've got time. Um, extreme bias in social media. Do you believe they'll give you a fair shake? Are we being naive? You have to try. There's, there's just no other. We can't, we can't concede social media to the left. You, you've got to try. Um, uh, as far as the history, um, the history question, it seems like it's a minefield. Yeah, a bit, but it's a useful one, and it's worth wading into. Um, what is the condition that Facebook is paid for an account? I'm not sure I understand that question. Um, all right, so uh, our next door account seems, our next door seems to delete anything the Republican states. I, I don't believe that. Um, you could pretend you just drop party labels when you're posting a next door if you're really worried about it. Um, Start I, I see the slant, but you just, you know, you, you, you move around it. Um, okay, next door is full of nuts. Yeah, well, you know, the neighborhood is full of nuts. I mean, you're in politics, you're going to run into a lot of nuts. Uh, you know, they love, uh, you know, they love politics. I don't know what else to say about it. Um, can you comment on the effectiveness of short video clips versus the work to create them? They're absolutely worth it. Um, I would, I would think of them, if you can't script them, then at least maybe do a rehearsal. You might even retape what you're posting. Um, keep uh, keep the, the background in mind anytime you're posting pictures or video. What's in the background? Other people are gonna look. Is there something in your house that's gonna identify where you live? You don't want that. Um, is there anything in your house like that's gonna show a picture of a grandchild? That bad idea, right? Like you gotta, you gotta realize that with social media, you don't want to like let people look at your bookshelf even, okay? They'll, you don't want them to be able to read the things that are in your room behind you unless you've prepared it for that. You've, you've literally like organized your office or wherever you're taping these things with the purpose of displaying what you want to display. Keep, keep that in mind. Big mistakes and, have been and made. For social, um, and for so, social media, the right. quality uh, is less important. I feel like important. a rookie doing my social media and website design. I would love to have connections that support me. Um, there, are, there are, It is not just Travis that does this. There are lots of people that, that are available to help with social media creation. Um, 
you can either engage them on an ongoing basis or you can you can hire someone just to do a website. Um, probably as a service to the Silicon Valley, uh, you know, Republican women, we probably should gather up a list of people that do this kind of work um, so they could pick and choose. I'm sure Travis would share his contact information um, in the chat function. Um, is iPhone video good enough? Yeah, for social media, it's good enough. Um, Go ahead and go ahead and play with it. Um, there are some tools, some free that will allow you to edit the video. Um, they're getting a lot better. Um, I'm not sure what just happened there. Um, there are. Okay. Am I back? Can you hear me again? Now we can. All right, sorry about that. Can you hear the background? No. Good, all right. So um, Travis, uh, are you back on? Did you wanna offer yeah, anything? I'm, I'm on, can you, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was just going to, uh, to, to, to say that um, when, when there, there, are, there are three ways to, to look at, at getting um, media attention. Uh, the way I look at it is you have earned media, which, you know, we discussed at the beginning of this uh, with the traditional dinosaur media. Uh, there's social media. And then there's a third component that I call owned media. So, for instance, I'm a star patcher, so I can stat I can put any content on any patch newspaper in the, in the country. Uh, and you, you know, if you guys uh, are running for office, it might be helpful to look at the, the if there's a, a local patch newspaper, the, the, it's all community driven and you can put things on there and it looks like a news story when you put it on there. And then you can put that on your social media pages to help create, uh, help create content. And the other, the other thing I was gonna say uh, as far as you know, the quality of video, the, the most important thing is content. Uh, quality is, is not, you know, it's kind of secondary to good content uh, for social media purposes. People will watch your videos, even if it's not, you know, Hollywood style, but most iPhones, most um, cameras that, that people are using today, um, you, you can do a lot of things that you couldn't do before. And so you can produce some nice looking videos uh, just with the, the tools you already have. And that's every bit as effective, in my view, as you know, um, something that that is is put together over time or with a professional. Um, that's not the point. The point is, uh, video is is probably one of the most important ways to communicate on social media. So. There's a question here about transgenderism, ethnic studies, CRT. You know, I, I'm not sure I consider that really a social media question. Um, that's a campaign strategy question. Um, and I gotta tell you, I'm not sure, you know, putting my political consultant hat on, I'm not sure what, you know, how to operate with those right now. Um, the fact of the matter is that San Francisco uh, threw out their entire school board. So maybe they're all tired of it now. You know, um, maybe it's an effective issue for us this fall. Uh, but that's a campaign strategy you gotta you gotta figure out in your race. It's not really a social media thing. I would say it's it's controversial. So if you're going to post on it, you, you're, it's going to naturally be polarizing, and it's and you're making a record. You're establishing your opinion on that. You know, so you just be aware of it. Um, if you feel that, that that's the issue for your race, you know, or, you know, whatever the issue is, I mean, uh, property taxes connect to school. I really don't know. Um, you know, you, you, you know, just have to wade in and, and, and opine on it. But um, just be clear that it's, you know, your opponent's going to have, going to know about it. They're going to take screenshots. Um, you know, it's part of politics. Um, trying to think, I think I covered 
most of what I wanted to get across in terms of uh, pitfalls and general techniques, specific techniques, um, you know, I, I could, you know, I could make myself available, Jan, if there are people that need, uh, you know, particularly personalized help, I think Travis has offered to do the same, um, you know, figure out a way to actually share my screen or have them share their screen with me later in a different session and, uh, you know, provide some specific advice. Um, but uh, overall, I think what Travis and I are telling you is social media is worth it. It's part of modern campaigning. It can help you save money. It's highly effective. And I think it's particularly effective uh, in local areas like school board races, given that you can control the geographic reach, you know, of your, uh, or of your social media presence. Um, so much else that we do in, in this is expensive. And even mailing people these days, there's a paper shortage. If you're going to do, you know, mail walk pieces out to folks, you better in November, you better check with, uh, with your vendor soon to make sure they even have paper to print that. Wow, that's uh, a good point. Yeah. Well, Jan, do you have any questions? Uh, I think we're good. I really appreciate your time, Chris, and I really appreciate Travis's time and making yourself available. So um, I think we're, we're good for now. I think it's given people a lot to think about. And uh, we'll certainly check with you before we decide to post anything. Okay? Appreciate I have a, that. I have a question. And that is, you talked about Pat. I have no idea. Catch. I have no idea what that means. Like the Los Gatos patch? No. Uh, yeah, it, it's um, the, the patch newspapers um, are, you know, they're all over the country. They have their community newspapers. They have them in, in every, pretty much every state across the country. Um, they're hyper local papers. They actually have paid reporters that cover uh, news, uh, but they a lot of their content is generated by community contributors and so you know for you know people like me who you know i've already written press releases it it just it doesn't take much to post on a patch uh new news news paper site and what's what i like about it is it used and this used to not be the case but now if you do if you post things on uh, uh, on a patch newspaper site, uh, if somebody searches your name in Google, that article will come up now. So it 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 it, it it's uh, they're taking community posts and putting it in the in the Google uh, searches SEO. So hmm. which is good for for you. Yeah. Okay. So Thank you. So to get something in the patch, you're saying that um, we could just send a press release to the patch or just just physically post in a comments in the patch? Well, there's um, you can you can join as a community member. You know, if there's a local patch in your that that is close either in your community or close to your community and you can uh, request to to be uh, uh, and it's 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 you know they take everybody there's no there's no real screening process you just have to fill out a an online form and they'll give you a login and then you can just go in and 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 um and you can uh, you can do it um most people just ask for their local town because that's where they live uh for me i i'm i i can i can post on any patch in in the country hey well this is that was, it's really good input. Well, I don't want to keep you gentlemen any longer. Thank you so much. Your time is thank you. very valuable to you. And uh, thank you very much for um, uh, joining us this evening. Thank you. Pleasure. I hope, I hope you all win come this fall. Um, we have 
we have so much work to do. I, I can't, every day is like a new outrage. So uh, I wish you all the best. <laughs> yeah. Thank, thanks very much, Chris and uh, Travis. Appreciate your time.